Well, hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe, and I'm fishing the absolute bottom of the tide here. Um, I don't think I've ever seen the water quite this low before, um, but the great thing is um, I started here right as it sort of ebbed, so the water wasn't flowing at all. It was almost still, and it's just getting a little bit of movement at the moment. So as it builds, um, the, the fishing will improve. It's, uh, we've had some fairly steady barometric, pre barometric pressure, which is really good. Um, a rising tide, that's great. Sun, not so good, you know, but um, that doesn't matter because I think because it's fairly early morning, so the low tide coinciding with the early morning and building, uh, that, will, uh, that will probably help me. So we'll see how we go. Um, I'm using a range of different baits today. And uh, uh, what I did is, while I'm setting up my gear, sometimes I'll just put in a big rig. If you get to the water really early, especially in water that contains some big fish, there'll be potentially pinkies and snapper in here. Uh, look, I just rigged up a, uh, a pilchard, tore its head off to actually allow out some of the flavours, put it on a, a ganged hook, and just put that to the side. And uh, what I'll do is I'll get my rods set up and get my burley mixed and everything ready. And hopefully what's happening is that while I'm doing that, maybe something will take. Uh, I just find that those, those first shots early in the morning, you know, that first cast, sometimes will just get a fish in the area. And, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll focus just on two rods. That other rod I'll bring in. You can only fish with two rods, remember. And, um, I'll, and I'm getting bites already on this one by the looks of it. Um, but what I'll do is I'll focus on the two rods. If I'm getting bites already, there's probably going to be some activity today. So uh, um, take advantage of the early morning when the fish are open to feeding. And, and just see what we can do. I just got down here and uh, first fish of the day is a, uh, <coughs> a mullet. And I actually caught it on some pretty heavy gear. I did not expect to get that. Um, I actually had a pilchard out there, uh, gang hooked, and <laughs> I got this mullet on it. So uh, who would think? So there's some activity, oh, it's trying to drown me. Some activity here straight away. Hey, that's a pretty good start to the day. Um, this will be a, by the way, it's biting probably a mullet. And um, so the burley's working, not not big fish at all, but um, it's always good to start off with a fish straight off. So we'll just see what we've got here. Oh, well, boy, took that one in the chest. And look, that's all right. In, in these waters, that's a, that's a fair size um, mullet. So good to catch one first off. Now, if you're, if you're fishing under conditions which are pretty good, so I'll just tighten up a bit here. Um, for instance, like you've, you know, you've got um, the bar pre barometric pressure is good, the temperatures are good, rising tide. Um, if the conditions are pretty good, but you've got something like overcast, or sorry, if you've got a, a sunny day, overcast is better, then always try and fish in the shade. So you want to give yourself as many conditions as possible that make the fish feel comfortable. So what I've done is I've chosen a spot now that will have shade for probably um, a few hours. When that sun goes away, if I've got enough burley in the area, I'll keep the fish there. If I haven't, um, they'll probably move on and there won't be any more bites. So it's uh, just a matter of trying to increase your odds every time. And remember, every time you get a bite, bring it back, change your bait, make sure the bait's as fresh as possible. I'm always uh, adjusting my baits, changing my baits, changing hook sizes, trying to work out what, uh, what'll bite. So look, Always having uh, a good knife, <laughs> which uh, and I've lost a few, but uh, having a good knife, good sharp knife, knife sharpener and a hook sharpener, very good. And the other thing is just having a cutting board. I've had this little piece of cutting board probably for about 15 years. <laughs> um, all it is is I, I cut it off from a larger one, so I have a couple of fishing bags and I cut it small enough so that it's just big enough to cut a um, small piece of fish or a pilchard or even the baits that I've got, make them smaller. Um, and I, I, so I took one cutting board, I cut it into three, and I put it into each of my fishing bags. Takes up no room, I slide it in down the side. Always got plenty of gear, but something small like this just saves you just looking for a hard surface to cut on, or cutting onto a rock or something like that where you actually blunt your knife. So having one of these, they last forever, and well worth having in your um, kit box so now that you've just, got something um, to cut. Just cast this rod out here, and um, I've been hitting the same spot pretty much um, every time I cast out. So I've had about only about four or five casts there, but now what's happening is I get activity almost straight away. So uh, it's good I know that I'm, I'm bringing the fish in. Um, and I've also got the other rod going too. And I've got something on this. Oh, 
could be a little grim maybe and I've got rocks in front of me that I've got to keep away from now it's a mullet I can see it out there right just bring this in okay so okay so these aren't these aren't a bad size actually not a, not a bad size fish so it's good that they're biting this morning I put that fish in, but this rod here, every now and again, again I'm getting a quite a good hit on it. So now I've got to focus on it, otherwise I'll uh, I'll lose any fish of that in the area. Because once they actually damage the bait, uh, even though the bait's still on the hook, uh, as you can see, it's still moving, um, they they usually stop biting. So you've really got to hit while that um, that bait is pristine. It's only when the the fish are absolutely hitting anything and really, really hungry, virtually in a feeding frenzy, that they'll take bad bait. So that's another important thing. So as I said before, refresh, refreshing your bait every time you pull in. So you get a couple of bites. I'm gonna pull this in soon, change my baits again, and then um, then it cast out. But I don't waste the old baits that I've got. I cut them into very small pieces. That's why I've got the cutting board, and I'll put that into my burley. So those really small pieces will be titbits to keep the fish interested. So you don't waste anything, but you need to make sure you've got that fresh, um, untarnished bait on your yeah. hook every time. Yeah, I've changed over rods. The, the rod that I've got here, this little graphite rod, the um, my uh, Bass Red spinning rod, actually has two top sections. So the top part of this, you can have a medium or a heavy uh, fishing style. So what I did is I changed over to heavy. I put a bigger, a bigger bait and a bigger hook on this. I've actually I've changed it over to handle heavier line. The other thing I have is the reel that I have, the Otter Reel here, it's a 3000 series, has two spools. So I took the other one off, put the heavier one on with the heavier line. So you can have a spool with light line, a spool with heavy line, you can have a rod with a, a heavier top section or a lighter top section. So you can actually change to suit conditions. So where I've needed to go up in, in, um, in size because I think I might be uh, potentially able to hook some big fish, I've been able to change the same rod and reel into a bigger size um, setup. So that works really well. If you're interested in these, they're on my website, howtofish.com.au, and I think it's a fantastic combo. I don't know if you can see, but I'm getting bites on that second rod there. So um, I've got to be, now I've got to really sort of watch this closely because they're, um, they're starting to pinch the bait a bit. So after they see a few of their friends come out of the water, um, they get a bit more wary about it, so um, and it stops. So, uh, just another thing, you've got to uh, obviously be really focused on your gear, watching all the time, and strike as soon as you see that bend in the rod. And okay. unfortunately, or fortunately, I hooked into a good fish. When I say good, I'm saying the it's heavier than the line I had here so it was getting hard to control I wasn't ready for it it just took off I couldn't film it and all it did is it swam around in front here it pulled a bit on the drag and then it went straight into a snag so I, I couldn't control it with the light line that I had so sometimes and occasionally what will happen is you go fishing with a light line you'll get more fish that way but unfortunately every now and again you'll get something big that you can't control and, uh, and that's what happened now. So I'm going to just have to, to break off, unfortunately. Um, I can't feel the fish on the end of this. I think he might have got off, or she might have got off, but uh, it's wrapped it round uh, a snag out there. So it was a, a good fight for about 30 seconds, and then it was all over. That's what happens with light lining. But as I say, in these waters, you expect to, to catch the smaller fish, and that's what you go to. And I'm saying fish up to, you know, say, the kilo mark, which is good. You can catch that quite easily. When it starts to get over that, you get three or four kilos in here, um, especially if you got into a decent sized pinky or maybe a snapper, you've got to have the line for it. I did have a rod for it, but the bait on that got taken. I, I pulled that back in because I couldn't control. I only can have two rods out. I was fishing with two rods and I lost it. Anyway, well, that was fishing. interesting. I was on the phone, completely unfocused, and I just, <laughs> I just hooked myself. Um, this Trevelli. Now it's not an enormous fish but it's not a bad size at all for this water and uh, it fought very well. I don't want to hurt it, I want to get it back into the water but um, 
What a great little fish. Just sorry about the footage everyone. I'm sort of trying to hold this. I pretty much packed everything else up. Okay, well, so you can see not a bad fish there and uh, just caught this um, as I pretty much on one of my last casts just before I had to go. Now something much bigger than this actually took my um, took my bait originally and got me wrapped around but at least this time I was able to strike into it so good to see there's some nice fish about I'm getting bites continuously now I've got the fish into the area everything's working perfectly and I gotta leave unfortunately I, I have an appointment that's been brought forward so I'm, I have to now uh, attend that and I've got to leave so just when I've got everything working properly and maybe there's some big fish in the area I gotta leave but at least I caught some fish today so um, it's nice to go home at least having caught something a little bit of excitement but pretty much you know I only had about an hour's fishing so really unfortunate anyway it just shows you use your burly the right conditions right gear and you can get fish even in a short period of time so okay if you like this video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe